Today we're going to check out a really cool workshop and meet a guy that I've known for many years. I worked with him on Mountain Biking UK magazine, testing bikes all over the world. Now what he doesn't know about bikes really is not worth knowing and you've got to see some of the stuff he can do. Check this out. Oh, dude, how's it going? All right, mate, how's it going? Yeah, good. I was actually just telling these people that uh, you're pretty much the master of all things mechanical, but this is <laughs> something a bit different. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that came out of one of our midsummer bike rides we do, um, where you basically have to build junk bikes to mess around on, and it's got a bit out of hand, unfortunately. <laughs> this is Finn, he's a good friend of mine, and I've known him, I reckon, for about 20 years. A uh, super helpful guy, unbelievable with bike tech, like another level of stuff. Now, I used to work with him on MBUK Magazine, then he was over at TF Tuned doing all the shock technician stuff, then he was an importer for Rose Bikes, and now he's running full factory suspension, which is his own suspension-based company, although he does do lots of other stuff, including working on Bosch e-bike motors. Uh, he's a certified Bosch technician, so really, if there's tech stuff that I don't know, Finn's the one I ring. Finn's actually left us to it to have a little rummage around his bike case. I can lose the mask for a minute, just so have to worry about things. But uh, as you might imagine, anyone that's worked for a lifetime around bikes has got quite a lot of stuff in here. Now, just behind where you are, there's all sorts of number plates from races over the years, which we'll probably have a bit of a chat about. And you might have noticed up here, there's a wheel that's made from cable ties. Now, you might have thought I'd have done something like that, but no, not even I'm that daft. So we'll pick that one up in a bit. But any good workshop is full of power tools and tools. This lathe Finn has had for such a long time. In fact, I've got a feeling he might have had this from someone who used to work at Curtis Bikes. I might be wrong on that, we'll have to ask him that in a bit. Helmets everywhere. I love the fact you've got an essential beer fridge in here as well with, what's he drinking at the moment? Pony Truck Pale Ale. Very nice, that's Box Steam Brewery. I guess that's just down the road. Very nice. Uh, and you've got your pig snacks there as well, which is always good. Parts washer. Now this is a particularly good parts washer because this one is really good for the environment. Again, we're going to talk about some of Finn's favourite tools in the world because there's a lot of them, as you're going to see. Things I like to see though, is things like this, the tools. Look how well organised this is. So you've got your Torx keys here, you've got your Allen keys as well. Oh, shadow foam. Look how nice this is. Everything is just immaculately organised. As, as you'd imagine for someone that works with bikes all day long, it's a little bit different to my workshop, that's for sure. And I think he's actually got a tool for everything in here. What am I looking at now? Really old school rock shocks pump here. Feels like that's for like an old Mag 21 or something from back in the day. I haven't even seen one of these in the flesh. Look how old it is, it's even got yellow on the screen. That's cool. Better put it back in there or it'll kill me. I'm gonna keep rummaging around. Oh, hello. What we got here? The Relia Hanger Alignment Gauge. That is very posh. I haven't used one of these probably in the last 10 years. I've used a Mr. Adjustable Wrench for doing that. Right, let's keep going. What can we see up here? So these, of course, so Finn rides a lot of evil bikes. So these are like schematic style drawings of just basically exploded drawings of all the part numbers, the bearings, the spacers. Love this stuff. We've actually got one of these in the tech set at work. Not that I've been there for a while though, because of lockdown stuff. Nice to have a rummage around in here as well. Oh, look, old Diacomp cable straddles. I don't see those very often. And finish line grip shift lubricant. That's a blast from the past when finish line had to make a grip shift official lube to make the grip shift work properly. Hmm. Love it. Everything around here is built to be efficient around bikes. You've uh, you got your little air jet and something I spotted a bit earlier on. Got an oil tray underneath the vice. How good is that? It's the most simple thing, but perfect for uh, dirty jobs. Always oh, left his cash there as well. Can have that away if he wasn't paying attention. Now, I did post something up on Instagram a while ago, and you might have seen this the Kashima Hammer 
Good use for an old knacker pair of forks. I think that's pretty cool. And also some what looks like a pair of Envy rims cut into shelf brackets. That's gonna make someone wince, I'm sure. But uh, there's a good use. Let's have a look up here. It's got all sorts of cool stuff. What we got in here? Bearings. Now Finn is super organized with this sort of thing, which really pleases me because a nice thing to see. All your different bearings, You've got your enduro bearings. I don't even know what all these numbers mean, but I can see that one's for an Arctos in there. And if Finn was here, he'd probably have to tell me exactly which each one of these is for. But he's not. There's something for the retro heads. It'll probably make a lot of you wince. So I think that's a Manitou 2 and that's a Manitou 3, both of which cut down. This one it looks like for 20 inch, maybe 24, but cut down into a kid's fork. And this one cut down for a 16 inch wheel perhaps. But the point is that is probably the coolest kid suspension fork on the market. It's crazy, isn't it? How cool is that? Okay, so I finished having a little rummage around and actually because there's so much stuff here, it's probably better just to ask Finn a bunch of questions about bikes and tech and see where he's at. Okay, so I've just been having a look at your Evil here, and I noticed you've, you've done quite a few little upgrades, especially, like, obviously you've done a coil shock yeah. on there. Uh, tell us about some of your best upgrades you've done to some of your own projects. Um, well, if, well, you've known me for quite a while, and you've known that I absolutely love coil shocks. Um, air is great if you need to adjust it for different people, or if you need to set it up in a shop for different customers, basically. So, 10 stone guy can come in, they'll set the bike up for him. 15 stone guy can come in, 10 minutes, they've set the same bike up for a different guy, basically. Yeah. Um, I think there are slight flaws in air. I think it sits lazy in the mid-stroke and it has a tendency to blow through the travel. Um, I find I can get much more support and grip and better performance from coil. And when you're up a mountain somewhere in France on the holiday, it's not gonna fail. You've always got a spring. Your damper might fail, but you can always get home, so. That's why I love coils. I think they're ace. First thing you do pretty much to a bike, I always see a coil rear shock appear on there. Yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm guessing you had to modify that because that's... They don't make a coil shock that size I was gonna say, I for think, this bike. Um, some people, I think Olin's make one, um, but they were way out of my price range. And I already had this shock in my previous bike. What, what shock is that? I can't see. Uh, that's the DHX2 coil. Yeah and I made a custom length basically because they don't do a 165. So there's a lot of machining goes into internally because it, it's a twin tube design and you can't just lop a bit off the tube because there's a shaped end one end and a shaped end the other end, one with ports, one with, and they have to be the right size. So what I ended up doing was machining a step into the sleeve internally, which is quite difficult to do because it's a really thin wall and then bonding the two together and then doing it that way. And I'm guessing you've done something with a fork because the fork looks a bit longer than what I normally see on a bike like that. Yeah. Um, and knowing you, it probably is not yeah, there again, as well. Yeah, again, core conversion on that fork. Um, that's got the push system in there. Um, coil forks tend to sit a little bit higher anyway for any given travel than an air because the air shock, an air fork will sit down 10 mil or so because of the negative chamber, whereas the the coil fork tends to sit up a bit more because it's using the, the full amount of travel. So that's a pretty slack, rowdy little bike. Is it, is it 120 on, on the rear? I think it was 120 right. rear, 140 front, yeah. 140 front, nice. Yeah. What's the story with the time pedals? I know you've run those for years and I, I could never figure it out. Like I've always chopped and changed between SPDs and crank and flats and stuff, but you've always ridden those. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people run Shimano just because they come with their bikes. Um, Obviously we were in a lucky situation with bike mags that we got to test every single set of pedals. So I spent a lot of time on everybody's product. I love the Crank Brothers because they had that nice open uh, area which purged mud straight away. Yeah. You could step on it with an absolute cake shoe and you get in every time. Um, and the time for me was just kind of a continuation of that. They, they clear so well and they're absolutely bloody bulletproof. You can smash these off rocks and they'll chip and they'll dent, but touch wood, I've not had one fail on me yet. And the, the backup from these guys is amazing as well, considering they're a relatively small company. 
uh, but most of their focus is road. I think their mountain bike products are fantastic though. And also, what's on your bars, a little anodized red button there, what's that? <laughs> that is a dip button for my exposure light. Um, so when you're flying down a trail, pop out, you probably have a car popping along and you've got your lights on full guns, you can literally just go boom, flick it down. I, I didn't realise they were a thing. I, yeah. I don't need to get one. Just a remote, yeah, straight on the, straight on the um, bar. I've is that an official product? It is, yeah, yeah. Um, this is one of the older ones uh, because it's an alloy body. Yeah. I find it a little bit tougher. Some of the newer ones are a bit plasticky. I really like the older ones. I think they're really cool. Okay, right, let's talk about um, tools and stuff. You, you work on a variety of things, which we will get to. I want to have a chat about yeah. your job and such. But uh, tell us about some of your favorite tools. They, they, could, they could be a basic multi-tool or it could be something quite complicated that you rely on for work. Yep. Uh, the one that I use pretty much every day, which you mentioned you never use, <laughs> is my park dropout tool. Uh, I use that probably every day. The first thing, when most bikes come in, they get this put on them. Um, just because nine times out of 10, if there's a gear problem with a bike, it's either cable stretch, cable's worn out, or it's this. The dropout mm. is bent. So people will go out, shift into first, and the drop and the um, rear mech goes straight through the space. Yeah, for sure. I really like the Park Tools um, internal cable routing kits. Uh, just really simple, and it makes it so much easier to thread a cable through a frame. So I'm, I'm quite surprised no one else has made that kit. I, I agree. That's one of the. It stops you swearing and stuff. Yeah, and it, and it makes it easier if, you're, if you've got a complicated guide, you run one of these through with the old cable as you pull it out, and then literally you just follow it back again. Pull it back in, yeah. And it just saves so much time. What about something a bit more, a bit more unusual that you use? Got any favorites? Uh, I picked up this fairly recently, which is a spring compressor kit. Um, they use these for cars, obviously, to compress the springs off the dampers. You need them on a car. Yeah. Um, but this is a little ditty one, which you can use on a regular coil shock. They sit in on the spring. So you put one each side of the spring, and then you can compress the spring down to get it on and off of a, of a tight shock. Because sometimes the length of the spring doesn't give you enough room to quite get that circlip out without oh, scratching sure. it. Yeah, okay. Um, so the little circlip, you can really scratch them really easily, especially with all the black anodized stuff. And you just crank these down both sides. Literally does what it says on the tin. Yeah, spring, compresses the spring. I've never seen those before. Um, yeah. And it just pulls the spring into, into a place where you can get to it and it's not, you know, it's not gonna hurt anyone. <laughs> it's pretty cool. This is cool, like th th these are not <laughs> things that I thought you would say as some of your favorite tools. Go on, give us one more. Um, the other thing I really like is, um, is a decent ratchet handle. Um, I use a lot of snap-on kit, uh, a fair amount of sort of generic like Halford stuff, but each wrench has a specific job. And I always find an excuse to kind of find another one. I've got a little bit of a problem with just getting these Diddy little ones that are pretty cool and a torque wrench or something like that. M plus one with, with wrenches. Yeah, yeah, you need, you definitely need all of them, yeah. If you haven't got the complete set, yeah, even the little stumpies. These are really useful. That, that's gorgeous. That um, when you want to work fast, it's easy in the hand. And also you're not putting a lot of torque on, on lightweight aluminium parts with yeah. these. Just nip them up and you're good to go. Um, another cool one I found recently is this little Stanley one. So. I use it mostly if I'm working on the cars, but it is useful for tight spaces. Um, if you just need to spin off a bolt, actually rotating Whoa. the handle spins the track as well. That's nice. And it's handed, so even if you can't get yeah. a full rotation in, you can... It reminds me of a drill chuck I've got to sort of go around corners. Yeah, it's one of those tools you always forget you've got though, so you're kind of swearing underneath a car on the cold floor and you're like, I wish I had this. <laughs> <laughs> I should use it more. <laughs> That's a great tool. Yeah. Okay, well starting off then, where did your love of mechanics start? How did you get to this point? 
<laughs> it's difficult one. I, my, my dad always used to let me tinker with cars and stuff, and he had an old Jeep. I really loved the, me the mechanical-ness of it, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it was going wrong quite a lot of the time for him, but we've always been in a situation where he'll just go and fix stuff, and I, I really loved that. So when things started going wrong with my bikes, as I got into mountain biking, it started getting really expensive for me just to to take it to the bike shop every time because I was a complete wrecker, like just smash a bike up every weekend. So yeah, that's where I started fixing my own stuff. So in the time I've known you, you've also had some pretty serious cars. So <laughs> I guess your the mechanical skill that you developed from cars is transferable to bikes or did it go the other way around? Um, I think a, a lot of it is transferable. But I didn't understand a lot of the car stuff until I started the bike stuff and the suspension specifically. Um, I think a lot of the guys that drive cars have all this fancy kit on them, like your adjustable suspension, but they don't actually know how to adjust them properly. They just put everything in the middle. But middle's not where you want your suspension. It's not great. <laughs> so tell us about some of the, the cool, car, cool car projects you've, you've had over the years. Um, well, I, I first started off with my brother and Volkswagen Golfs. Um, so he had a really nice Mark II. Back in the day when they were kind of a current car, I um, really liked that. Um, and he helped me buy my first car, which was a Mark I Golf. It was only a 1.1, but I absolutely loved that car. But it always used to break. So I fixed that a lot because I couldn't afford to do anything else. Um, that developed into I had various Golfs and Audis. Um, and then I built a Volkswagen pickup, which was a T25, the old wedge shape um, van, but it was a pickup version. I uh, blew the engine up and I, me and a couple of mates put a Subaru WRX engine into it. So it was turbocharged. That's, an, that's the coolest project I think you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. But when track. you say rebuilt it, that's a mild understatement. It was, oh yeah, it was literally. Almost completely a new vehicle by the time you'd finished. Pre pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of hours spent messing around with it. Um, when I had the time, which was really cool. Um, haven't got the time to do that sort of stuff these days. But yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to build another project. I've got some stuff in mind. So, so let's, let's move on to riding because that's kind of really why we're here. Yeah. So I actually think we're fairly similar in the sort of the things we like and the places we like. But where where would you ride? if you weren't restricted, as we all are at the moment? If you go anywhere? I think the Alps, for me, is one of my favorite destinations. Uh, I've been going there a long time, I know it really well. Uh, but I always find little pockets of new stuff, which I'm always intrigued by, like different locations. There's so much area to cover. Um, going to Austria, I love going to Austria. And I love Austrian people and the food and the areas there. There's a lot of untapped stuff, I think, towards Austria and even Slovenia, kind of that direction. I'd like to move further away and, and do some more riding over that way, it'd be really cool. Um, but I think my ultimate destination is still Whistler. Nothing beats, I think, just all they want to do. It's all bikes, isn't it? It's yeah. all or nothing. A lot of places you go, you got to consider there's other things going on. In Whistler, if you're on a bike, you're you're ahead of the pack. You're you're the one to, to That's look what up to, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. What's the what's the best older bike you've had or ridden over the years? Maybe something nostalgic or something you just enjoyed? There's a couple that spring to mind. I mean, I had an old Manitou FS. It, it just whizzed past back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I I have really cool memories of that bike because it was kind of the, one of the first full sus bikes that really worked, and it was light, and it was fast. I mean, back then, a lot of the full suspension bikes either worked and were really heavy, or they were sluggish, but worked a bit, and it, there was always a compromise. That bike really worked, um, and it was fast, but the shock used to blow up all the time. Didn't it have that crazy part elastomer, part spring? Yeah, shock? it had an elastomer and a spring in the same spring unit, yeah. and then underneath it had a Mani basically which was a Manitou Mach 5 damper but it had no way of controlling the volume of the oil inside the shock. So basically, as soon as you bottomed it out hard, it used to blow the seals. <laughs> it's like, ah, great. Um, yeah, and another one I really liked was um, I had a Cove Playmate for 
I think I got that at the magazine while yeah, I was there. So that's a single pivot, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a really nice single pivot. It was simple, and I got Tim Flux to do my suspension. So I had a fifth element rear shock and a highly modified Tim Flux boxer on the front. So those fifth element shocks were a game changer at the time. Yeah, amazing. So you yeah. could make an average bike pedal pretty well and yeah, get I mean, over the floors. I think I think without that shot, that bike would have pedaled horrendously. Uh, it went downhill, amazing. It was so smooth and yeah. buttery. But that shock just made it usable pretty much everywhere. Um, and I, I built this super light bike up, and I remember boasting about it to you in the office, <laughs> going, "Ah, oh, this bike's going to be amazing. It's super light. It's going to be perfect for the Alps trip." And then you filled my tyres up with water for me. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Thanks. You didn't even notice either. <laughs> which no. is, which I'm sure like, try oh, picking I feel it a bit, up. Feel a bit weak today. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started riding together, we were, it was probably eight speed we were on at the time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You think just in in that time, there's been so much new tech come around. What's the the coolest mountain bike tech that you've seen over the years? Mm. Pretty broad. Right, Pretty there. broad, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a retro grouch, to be honest, when it comes to, especially like you mentioned, the gears. Um, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> but I was running single chainring on probably eight speed, maybe even earlier than that. My first sort of foray into that sort of stuff came from racing mountain bikes in a cross country, yeah. where everything was triple chainring. And there was no point in having a granny ring. If you were using your granny ring, you could run faster. Yeah, you've had a single chain ring the entire time I've known you. Yeah. The first bike that you had when you started on a mag was a specialised enduro, maybe something like that. Yeah, like a, a black one, early a silo enduro. on the front. That's right. And yeah, that was yeah. that was single from even back then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, binning off the the front chain rings just made absolute sense to me. And so you've you've yeah. So you're you're into the single chain ring. You're clearly not that enthused about air. As good as it is, you prefer the coil thing. Yeah. There's, got, there's got to be something else that's a bit more modernised that yeah, floats your boat. Or, or is it the e-bike related stuff where that's going? That's... I, think, I think it is. I mean, I can only see mountain biking, for me, mountain biking has become e-biking. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't like it and I can understand why, because it's not as pure. But if you think about it that way, then why would you have a full suspension bike? Why would you have clip-in pedals? Why would you have all these extra gears? It kind of seems a bit weird to people dismiss. Don't, people don't like change, though. That's the yeah, thing. but you're instantly dismissing a technology that's bringing such an advantage to. to otherwise, we'll still be riding around on on road bikes. And, and arguably, it, it's changing where you can ride as well, and the Definitely. way you can approach stuff. One hundred percent. Okay, enough about all of the cool tech. What's your favourite part of your workshop? Uh, I think my lathe. I use it every day. Um, it's a piece that I got actually from TF Tuned. They went from the little the little lathe that is there um, up to a much bigger unit, um, and they were going to get rid of the the old lathe. And I was like, I'd, I'd really like to have that in my workshop. And they were like, Okay, give me some money for it, and it's yours. And I didn't pay very much for it. I got an absolute deal on it, and I use it pretty much every day. As a service centre, what grinds your gears? Dirty bikes. <laughs> I can't stand dirty bikes. <laughs> I've got quite a few customers who love to bring me a crusty bike and they think I really enjoy it, but I'm sorry I don't. <laughs> is, is that because you return the bike better than probably when they bought it? Yeah, it, it'll come back immaculate. Um, and yeah, I, th I, th I, think, I think they think I really enjoy it, but yeah, I, I don't really... I don't enjoy cleaning bikes as so much as doing the job of cleaning bike isn't it enjoyable, but I enjoy having the finished product that's yeah. immaculate and working real nice and just super accurate. Well, that's ultimate satisfaction, isn't it, when you're doing Yeah, when you've made some, you've, it is really satisfying when you've taken something from being a heap into something really nice. Yeah. Give us three bits of advice, three punchy bits of advice for our viewers that are working on bikes. Uh, first of all, don't work on a dirty bike. Um, don't take stuff apart when it's dirty. Clean it first, then you can take it apart. Because otherwise you just end up getting dirt inside your fork, inside your shock. Even like if you're doing a tyre, clean your wheels and your tyres first. Because dirt can sit in between the rim bed, gets in your sealant, gets everywhere. It's just, And also you 
don't get dirty hands then either. That's an easy one. <laughs> um, probably second for me, lubricate your chain. Even if you come back from a really muddy ride and you're tired and you're cold, just spray some lube on your chain when you put your bike away. Do that and your chain will be pristine for a long time. Thirdly is probably more suspension related. Um, your compression on your suspension, especially in the UK because it's super cold, um, I'd run it pretty much wide open, maybe one or two clicks. And the rebound, you want to close it right down. Rebound is better slower. You're going to do yourself less of an injury if your rebound's too slow than if it's too fast. Well, there we go. That's uh, Finn and his bike cave. As you can probably tell, he does know a thing or two about suspension. So it's actually given me an idea whilst making this video. I'm going to do an Ask special with Finn all about the finer stuff with suspension. So custom setups, coil conversions, obscure old suspension. Get any questions in about suspension for Finn and we'll do a show exclusively on that very soon. Use the hashtag Ask Tech in the comments and we'll see you in another video soon. Ta-ra.